for her. I love you, ma'am. Oh. oh, please, you may be seated. Thank you. Oh. I'm usually one who is very easy with the microphone. But I must admit that this is very hard on me, being that my husband was the firstborn of this family of mom. Where is mom? Oh, okay. Oh, you know, that she loved so dearly. And, uh, and, and really made him, she literally made him who he was and he acknowledged that all the years of his life. And just to go back a little before we get to, the, to this part where we are right now, when he first took me to mom, I was a 24-year-old younger. And he never told me he was bringing me to you. <laughs> See, we need to deal with this man. <laughs> I would have dressed like this at least. He made, he took me to mom when I was in shorts. Do you hear me, somebody? I was in shorts. That's the time mom was ministering at uh, uh, um, uh, Charter Hall, City Hall, and I knew, together with my sister, that mom sees you even in the intestines. <laughs> like she knows everything inside out about you. And I'm like, how are you going to take me to her wearing shorts? God, she can read everything, even my, what I ate. She can see it inside. But she looked at me and she told him, this is she. My mom caught me in the spirit. She didn't see the shorts. She saw in the spirit that I was the wife. And she told him as much. And he had taken other girls before. And she said, don't even dare bring that one to me. I don't even want to see them. She had rejected everybody else until she saw me and said, she's the one. And mom, how, how so right, how so prophetic that yes, I was his wife. And we walked a journey with my husband together with the mom all the days of our marriage. And any time that my husband, which were few, there were few. I think I only called mom twice. I did, twice. And the first time I went to pick mom and brought her right inside the bedroom. And my husband didn't even know that I was bringing her. He thought it's me entering. We entered with mom. And I say, Mom, here is your boy. Deal with him now. Deal. <laughs> By the time Mom was done, the boy was on the ground <laughs> worshiping God and saying, I'm sorry. And I think it was only two times that, only twice. He was an obedient son. He was a good man. And so, when we come into the journey of his uh, uh, being unwell. It was a, a long journey. 
And he started in 2018, but uh, when he did the bone marrow transplant, he got well, and he was given a clean bill of health. Until 2021, again, he started feeling pain on the leg at the end of 2021, and the journey just began. And again, he was cancer-free. And then uh, 2023, November, we were called. And, and Miss Jordan, I cannot, uh, my mom, can I please have you sit? Am I tiring you? Uh, yeah, that's fine. You're good. Because I'm getting strength from you. Yeah, okay. Okay. And, 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 and so, uh, Jordan, uh, please, Jordan and, and Pastor Kanye, would you please stand up on, on your feet? This, this couple... Yes. were beyond, yeah. beyond amazing. They are our pastors in Atlanta, Georgia. And Bishop lived in, that, in their house for the last one year. They have a, a penthouse. They did for us like, uh, like uh, the Shunammite did for the prophet. We have a whole floor in their place that belongs to Bishop and I. And uh, she, she is a nurse, and so she was uh, taking him to see the doctor and all that as a nurse. And she called me and said, Mom, guess what? And I said, I'm guessing. And she said, Dad is cancer-free. And we... we we lost it with joy. We, we were so ecstatic. We were so excited, my mom. I called all our spiritual children. We said, wow, God has done it for us. We celebrated. And I called first lady. I called second lady. And I called everybody. And I said, on the 10th of December, we were going to have an amazing uh, uh, function. Uh, Prophetess Leslie uh, had even seen it. And she spoke to us we, as a church that she saw us in white celebrating and it did happen exactly like Jeremy told you, prophetess, exactly that's what happened. And we celebrated and really enjoyed. And so when again he started getting unwell in February, I'm wondering, God, what's going on? What is this? In my Noah, in my Noah, in my bones, in everything in me, saw him rising up whole strong and doing the work of the ministry and then whew, oh. in June because he started ailing in, in May. Because in March, he did an amazing... He preached powerfully in church. March, he preached in April. Mm -hmm. He even preached and did such an amazing work. You remember, Mom, you visited him at home. Yeah. And so, after preaching, the last message he ever preached, he did a demonstration that was absolutely out of this world that we will never forget as Jubilee Christian Church. And then he handed the mic over. There you go. And as I held it, he told Robert, let's go. And they walked out, and that was the last message he ever preached. And then my mom, and, and this is for all of us, he knew he was going. But I think we could never accept it. And God knew he cannot even try to come to me to ask me whether he can go because he knows the answer. Yes, he, he, yeah. My best friend, yeah. I've known him more than I've been alone. I've been with him more than I've been alone. I don't know how to do life without this man. Mama, I need God. I need his angels. I need the Holy Ghost. I need, I need all the hosts of heaven to just help me walk this journey because it's hard. It's tough, mom. But God. But God. But God. And he'll have to use you to help me, mom. Amen. <laughs> he said, 
I want to go home. And he was saying in front of uh, Pastor Andrew and I, he said, I want to go home. I said, listen here carefully. You are already home. Because we are in the house. Yeah. You're saying you want to go home. Yeah. I said, listen, honey, you are home. Yeah. They, they, and then one day he said, they are coming. I said, tell them to go. <laughs> Where are they coming? Because I was seeing, like, what he's saying is that they can see the angels coming. Yeah. And the last thing I wanted was to imagine that they, they were coming for him. So I would refuse it and resist it. And we always told him, stop talking like that and all that. And, until... He stopped saying it. He stopped saying it. Because we were fighting it. But he reached a point where he did want to go. So all I am asking is please, I know you all say, oh, Pastor Kathy is so strong. I just need all of you to please uphold me and my children in prayer and help us walk this journey because it's a rough road. I will not lie to you that it's hard, it's tough. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate our mom, Reverend Kathy Kuna, and her mom, the prophet, Reverend Teresia Wairimu. Thank you so much. I will now hand the microphone over to Minister Ray to guide us on the way forward. Let's appreciate him as he comes forward. Uh, Pastor Andrew for leading us through the tributes um, Reverend um, Kathy you have a family we love you so much um, all of these people who are gathered here are here because they love you you shall make it JCC shall be stronger Every son that stood, I saw so many sons and daughters standing. Greater work will be done in JCC, not just now, but many generations to come. The strength of the Lord will be upon you in the name of Jesus. We want to honor.